Happy New Year, comrades. Welcome back to part two of my note-taking journey with Obsidian. When I introduced Obsidian last year, I introduced you to the analog component of my note-taking system as well, which is still going strong. Uh, but this year I managed to add a, a neat little feature, possibly by buying my notebook on a Friday, which gave me not one, not two, but three cover pages on my notebook. <laughs> Utterly useless, but kind of, kind of funny. Uh, anyhow, it is um, 2022, and I've been using Obsidian uh, fairly heavily now for about six months, using it in a very manual way, in ways that do not scale, trying to understand um, just how my workflow is going to best suit um, the way that I work. Uh, but now it's time to start to take some of the pro take advantage of some of the programmability of Obsidian and automate and abstract away some of the details. So let's uh, let me show you what I've discovered so far. When we were just chatting about Obsidian last year, I pointed out that I usually work inside some of these markdown files, but I put the raw markdown on the left and the rendered version on the right. Just for continuity, um, that was last year's method. This year's method, um, only a few weeks later, is courtesy of a great new feature that Obsidian have introduced. Uh, and you can find it here in this menu down the bottom. It's called Live Preview. So if I enable that, instead of the raw markdown appearing on the left-hand side, the rendered version appears until you put your cursor um, in a rendered section. And then the raw markdown appears slightly uh, rendered. That means that I can both preview and edit my markdown in the same pane. So this pane here on the right is now obsolete. I no longer need it there. Um, this is working really uh, nicely. I was a bit sceptical because a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get editor, is precisely what I'm trying to avoid in editing markdown files. The great thing is that they're text files, they're raw, they don't need to be heavily rendered in order to see what's going on. But this works really, really nicely. It's a, it's a live uh, switch between the raw markdown and the rendered version as you're moving through the file. Um, and it's working quite nicely. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there so you could see um, the continuity from the previous video. Um, now, the way I've been using Obsidian is basically just to manually um, take notes. So I typically uh, will come across something that I find worthwhile um, uh, keeping a record. I want to remember it um, for later. And I'll just copy some elements uh, that I want to um, keep to jog my memory, putting in plenty of uh, search terms. So um, Jose here is writing on uh, Rome Research uh, Daily Workflow. And I'll jump back to the, um, the site and grab the URL. Um, and then uh, I can put that in my note. Um, I can add some, um, some, some thoughts, you know, some reflections. This is a candid stream of consciousness musings on uh, keeping track of your day using a um, bunch of features in Rome, uh, which, uh, to be clear, is the note-taking system that I used prior to Obsidian, so I'm still um, very, um, I have a have a uh, an in interest in how people are using Rome because um, it was almost my favourite note taking system. Uh, so in particular, uh, one used um, templates and a couple of uh, plugins for Google Calendar and Twitter, for example. Um, I can also put a a tag in here so I can easily um, view categories of information later. Um, I really enjoyed the screencasting medium. Um, and it was great to see someone's thoughts or their, their process, you know, coming alive uh, as they're doing it. Um, and, and you end up picking up 
a whole bunch of stuff that um, that the presenter didn't necessarily have as part of their, their script. And I think that's what's great about the medium. Anyway, so there we go. I've entered uh, my uh, my link um, to the original material and a couple of reflections um, that, that I uh, grabbed out of the article um, and then it's part of my notes. But it's 2022, mate, nobody got time for that. So it's time to look at tools to make that a bit more um, uh, a bit more streamlined, particularly when I'm on the go and I don't have the convenience of a, of a full-size keyboard and computer to do all that editing. So let me show you the way, because it is 2022, the way you automate this appears to be, um, in this day and age, iOS shortcuts. So after a hurricane tour of that lumpy landscape, I came up with um, two really, really beautiful uh, nuggets. Clip to Obsidian and take a memo. So let me show you both of those. Before I do, please uh, note that these are very much derivative works. I'm very much standing on the shoulders of, um, of giants and I will um, provide attribution of, uh, of those giants whose shoulders I am standing on. So let's get into it. As I said, the path of least resistance for automation in Obsidian appears to be iOS shortcuts. So let me jump over to my iPad so I can demonstrate that. The first thing I'll do is open up uh, Shortcuts and we'll, I want to go through Clip to Obsidian and take a memo. So let me open up Clip to Obsidian first. All it's doing is pulling information from the Share Sheet, which is that arrow icon you see all over iOS. It's finding the URL. It's expanding it, so removing all that redirection and shortening garbage so you get the actual authentic URL. Um, for for saving in your article, then grabs the content of the article, attempts to convert it to Markdown, and sticks it into this template. I like to put a tag at the top called Web Clip, a heading which is the current date, and then the metadata and content of the um, the uh, web page. It then creates a new document in your Obsidian Vault and opens that uh, that document so that you can review it. So let's see that in action. Typically, I'm using this when I'm in a browser. I've been reading this website and I think, you know what, um, I'd like to keep a copy of this. So I open up my share sheet and I scroll down and I find Clip to Obsidian appears. When I open up that guy, it runs that script. <clears throat> if it's the first time I've done it on that website, it will ask for permission, which is a bit of a pain, but we can live with it. And then it creates a document in Obsidian, um, ready for me to continue editing. I don't typically do any editing at this point, but I can, if I like, I might want to put another uh, tag in there, so to remind me um, uh, where I might want to pull up uh, this information uh, later. But then I go on with my life, and I continue um, browsing away, and I think, Actually, I would like to get a copy of this one. Let me uh, stick that one in Obsidian as well. Slight pause as it reads the website and attempts to convert it to Markdown and create your document. This time it's done a pretty good job. If I turn on the, the rendering, you can see it's grabbed um, quite a bit of content out of the website um, for me to use later, which is nice. But sometimes it doesn't. Uh, for example, Obsidian's own help site, it doesn't parse very well. I think this is dynamically generated and, and that might be part of why it's having trouble. Um, so if I attempt to click to Obsidian, this site, <clears throat> it tries its earnest best. Uh, doesn't get any content for the website, but I've still got the URL, I've still got the date, I've still got the content uh, that, 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 that's really key and I can use that later. So to demonstrate that, typically I'm not doing much more on the iPad. Um, it's really a consumption device. I'll do my creation when I'm back on the computer. So let me jump back to the computer here. My vaults are synced between all my devices, so by the time I get back onto my computer, those documents will appear in here. Because I tag them, I can find them all in this tag pane under the web clip. Sure enough, there's the uh, the documents that I tag. The, Picnic train one and the 15 things to do, yada, yada, yada. 
the nice thing about the way that I've set up this structure is that I can have my usual note taking um, document open and simply copy and paste in between uh, and it's already formatted in the way that I want. Um, I can even grab elements out of that that, uh, that the script managed to save without having to go back to the website and grab them um, manually. So that's quite nice. <clears throat> so that's uh, click to Obsidian. Next, let me show you, take a memo. Sometimes I don't even have my iPad on me or my hands are busy, I'm in the garage, they're greasy, or I'm out um, riding my bike. But I do typically have headphones in and uh, a mobile phone near me. So the next one that I'll demonstrate, let me jump back to my iPad just to show you. Open up shortcuts, shortcuts is called Take a Memo. Let me open that guy. This fellow is a bit different. It um, uh, allows you to dictate text. It grabs that text, again, sticks it in a particular uh, format, <clears throat> and then prepends it to an existing document in my vault. Let me show you how that one works. As I said, the take a memo shortcut uh, uses dictation, so it pairs really nicely with Siri. So I'm going to use Siri on my phone. Hey Siri, take a memo. What's the text? Musings. Is it really turtles all the way down? Okay. And that's done. So then I can move on with my life. Later on, I might be in a different situation and there's something I really need to remember. Otherwise the thought will be gone. I can do the same thing again. Hey Siri, take a memo. What's the text? Bunnings. Remember to pick up a 80 watt laser cutter. That's done. Uh, and uh, then I'd go on with my life. By the time I'm back at a computer, in fact only seconds later really, those entries have been added to my vault and synced with all my devices. They get inserted in my case in my inbox file, so if I open that guy, you can see the top two entries are the ones that I just dictated. I can then process them in whatever way I like, uh, and when I'm done, hit the checkbox and move on with my day. So that's take a memo. Um, in total, two simple iOS shortcuts, clip to Obsidian and take a memo. And um, they're lowering the barrier for me getting content into Obsidian, which is uh, an all-important criteria for an effective note-taking uh, system. See you next time.